with so many things changing and experiencing crises around us, something inside of us yearns for stability and security. I believe we're born with a sense that we want to have peace. We want to have peace with others. We want to have peace with the world. And yet around us, things change so quickly. We change as we get older and the world changes. And right now, boy, if we were ever in the midst of transition and change and chaos and confusion in the world and in the United States of America, it's now with a spike in the coronavirus in our nation, our state, our communities, we are facing so many changes, we need stability. And I believe that's what James is trying to talk about here. And that's the fact that when people are spiritually mature, as change comes into their life, as they face crises, they have a stability about them. They have a security about them that brings peace and a sense of well-being to those that they're in contact with. We become like a rock in the midst of the storm. Why? Because we're anchored to the rock, Jesus Christ. You know, in this world, you will have tribulation, Jesus said, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So in this passage in James chapter 1, where James now is talking about don't be self-deceived. Don't be self-deceived thinking you're spiritual when you're not. He encourages us to look into the mirror, look into the Word of God like we would look into a mirror in the morning. And now he says if you look in that mirror and you just don't do anything about it and go your way, you forget exactly what you look like. In other words, nothing changes in your life when it comes to things that need to be taken care of internally. We look into the mirror to see the external in the morning. We look into God's Word, the mirror of God's Word, to see the inward the things in our heart, the things in our mind, the things in our attitudes, the things in our actions that need to be changed. And so he says, don't be just looking and not doing because you deceive yourself. Then he, and I love this, and that's what we want to look at for a moment here, but the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, that is the one who will per, per, persevere, and you won't be a forgetful hearer, but you will be a doer you will be blessed, blessed in your doing. You'll be blessed in your deeds. I couldn't help but think of that verse in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick, it's alive, it's powerful, it's sharper than a two-edged sword. And it says, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the first thing that we need to do is examine ourselves. The Word of God has an examining effect. It it shows us what's really going on in our hearts. And I'm praying and believing that that's what God wants us to do today. He wants you to do, He wants me today to take God's Word, to take the truth of God's Word. Jesus said, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things that I say. Now, he said it's the perfect law of liberty. Now, some people think the law uh, prohibits, uh, it condemns. The law brings you under a place where you are restricted. You can't do anything. But it, isn't it interesting? He calls the Word of God the law of liberty. When you look into the Word of God and obey it, you're free. Jesus said, if the Son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. Why? Jesus fulfilled the entire law. He never broke one iota of it, and he completely fulfilled it when he died on the cross, and he rose again the third day. And now when you look into the perfect law of liberty and obey it and do what it tells you to do, mainly love God, and love your neighbor. All the laws fulfilled in that. And you really do love God and your neighbor. You are free. You're free to live. I get so excited about that. You're free to live, free to love, free to serve, free to be what God really intended you to be. Boy, I sure hope that you'll look in that perfect law of liberty today. And everything you do, he says, will be blessed. You'll be blessed in your doings. And what a great feeling. It even means you'll be happy as you fulfill that perfect law of liberty. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I trust you'll look into that law, that mirror of God's Word, and then do what you see you need to do. God bless. Have a great day.